with another one. This is episode number three, my million dollar journey. Um, thanks for sticking with me. We're going to talk a little bit about amortization today. And if you're not familiar with that term, it's basically just a fancy way of saying paying off debt or paying down debt. Um, so again, we talked on, on, on episode two about appreciation and most people experiencing it in their life, but just not really understanding how to really use it to their advantage. Amortization is the same way. If you've watched my videos before, you know I'm a big, uh, you know, there are gurus out there, financial gurus out there that say all debt is bad. All debt is not bad. Uh, bad debt is bad, but there's also good debt as well. And I think real estate debt is good debt. Real estate debt allows you to increase your net worth. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly how. So through amortization, and um, if you were curious about this, you can pull up uh, or Google an amortization schedule. It's, uh, I'm not going to spell it for you in a second. Um, but Google amortization schedule. And um, it's very complex to kind of calculate on your own. So you need some kind of calculator that you can do. And basically what it does is um, it says if you have $100,000 worth of debt, you own a $200,000 home and you owe $100,000, your mortgage is $100,000. Um, over time, depending on your interest rate and so a couple of the factors, how much debt will you be paying off with each individual payment? And most people don't understand that. An amortization schedule, it starts off really, really slowly. Um, meaning that with each mortgage payment, the primary, the, the bulk of your payment is going to interest back to the bank. Um, the, that's how the bank makes their money. They charge you interest and then you're paying off principal, meaning you're paying off a little bit of the debt on the loan. And as you start to um, get further down, let's say year two or three or four or five, um, you're not really paying off much, but year seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, you start to pay off large chunks of principal, large parts of uh, large chunks of principal, meaning that you're reducing your debt. And again, net worth is your assets, your total of your assets minus the total of your liabilities, right? So anytime you have anything increase in value, you're increasing your net worth. Anytime you have a reduction in your debt, you're increasing your net worth as well. So my amortization schedule tells me that over the years, I'm going to, even if my property value stayed the same, I own a $200,000 house, my mortgage is $100,000. Even if I, even if the, I got no appreciation whatsoever, my mortgage, my, my home value stayed at $200,000 with each mortgage payment, I'm paying off debt, meaning I'm increasing my net worth by a number. So in a, in, a, in a sense, I'm not encouraging anybody to go out there and just rack up all types of, all types of debt because it has to be related to income producing property, generating, you know, income generating property, because technically I'm not paying off my debt. My tenants with their rent payments are paying off my debt, which is increasing my net worth. So we talked a little bit about appreciation in, in episode number two, we're paying off where, and the, the property was appreciating and increasing our net worth. Now we're kind of opening up the scale and you're talking about um, debt pay down, which is increasing your net worth as well. So if you look and, and how does it relate back to our, our million dollar journey? Well, if you look at um, last time I told you I owned roughly $10 million in property. That was the property's value, right? And this is how you spell amortization. If you can see this and you want to Google it uh, and pull up your own calculator, you can kind of calculate when your debt will be paid down to a certain number, um, you know, when you'll get down to $100,000 on your mortgage, when you'll get down to $50,000 on your mortgage and so on. Um, so we talked about property appreciation. I own about $10 million in property. Um, uh, with that, there's about, let's call it, um, you know, let's call it $6 million in debt or something like that. I can't remember the exact, exact number. The reason this is a little bit more complex is because I, you have different mortgages with different principal balances with different interest rates with, uh, you know, different, uh, payment schedules and stuff like that. So it's very, it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm, I'm giving a round number here, but based on that $6 million roughly in debt, I would be paying off or my tenants would be paying off. Hopefully you heard me behind the board. Uh, my tenants would be paying off roughly $50,000 uh, in debt over the next 12 months. So that is a, a an additional $50,000 that's going to go into my net worth as my debt is being reduced. And it's the same thing with anything else, right? If you, if you have a net worth of, 
$100,000, right? And then you suddenly come into $20,000. You inherited $20,000. Well, now you immediately have a net worth of $120,000. Or if you had a net worth of $120,000 and then you decided over the next few months, I'm going to pay off this $10,000 credit card. Well, now you, your, your debt is being reduced, meaning you have a net worth of $130,000 now, right? So it's the same exact thing. I'm basically just uh, calculating or looking into the future and not letting it just happen to me when you know uh, another fifty thousand dollars will roll off or I'm calculating that in the next 12 months another fifty thousand dollars will roll off of my principal uh, balance that I owe on you know various mortgages right now so um, if you're staying with me video number two we talked about a two hundred thousand dollars in appreciation the value going up in the property my net worth increasing and now we're talking about two hundred or excuse me fifty thousand dollars in debt reduction for a total of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars um, just by standing still. That's not me. That's not me being active. That's not me going out in the market. That's not me buying rehabs and renting and increasing values through, you know, uh, uh, rental increases and stuff like that. That's just me standing still about a quarter million dollars, um, in increase on uh, just from the properties that I own and the things that I've done in the past. So the question becomes, how do I create another $750,000 to actually get me to that million dollar uh, mark that I want to set. And on number three, um, we'll dive into it. Over the next few episodes, we're going to talk about different projects, um, different projections. Again, they are projections because you're not, there's no guarantee. You have to actually get in there and do the project. You have to, I'm going to project some things that I haven't even purchased yet, right? So I'm going to actually go out there and say, you know, we have several deals under contract, several p properties that we're working on, uh, a couple other things that we have under contract that haven't yet been financed yet. Uh, and then in projecting a couple deals that I don't even know what they are, I don't have addresses or anything, but I just know through our networking, through our lead generation systems that we're going to go out there and find uh, certain things and these are the deals that I'll be targeting. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into um, deal structure and a whole bunch of other things in the next couple episodes. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you can use this as motivation. Hopefully you can use this in your own personal portfolio to kind of project things uh, as you move along. Um, when you'll become a millionaire, when you'll become, you know, a multimillionaire and, and, and so forth. So we'll catch you on the next one.